Hey there everyone, hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing pretty well myself. My name is Silveraka and I'm here to bring you guys a little bit of a video here. It might be pretty long actually, but this video is going to be created with new Iron Man accounts in mind. So if you guys have already made your Iron Man account and you're looking for tips on how to train your Iron Man account and make it a little bit more efficient, then just wait until the next video because this one is just helping people uh, who have just started their Iron Man account and want to train everything as efficiently as possible. This might apply to you even if you have already created an Iron Man account because there are a lot of good tips in here. So first of all I'm going to tell you guys a few things that are going to help you make or get the most out of this guide and just get the most out of the game in general. So first of all it's highly advised to unlock all the lodestones that are available to you because it'll just make it a lot easier to get around. You can complete the stronghold of security for your first 10k coins as well as some combat boots. It's a lot easier this time around because nothing in the stronghold is aggressive and there are no questions when you're going through the doors. So you could just go straight to the end of the stronghold and get yourself 10 free coins and as well as some combat boots. You'll definitely want to talk to Mary Rancor for a free Dwarven Army Axe and some other free stuff, such as a couple potions, a steel helm, I'm not sure if she gives you a weapon, I think she might though, as well as a few teleport tabs which might come in handy, especially if you're a hardcore Iron Man account. Now one of the first things you're going to want to train is going to be mining and smithing, this is obviously my opinion. Now you can complete the Blood Pact quest in order to kill the skeletons in the Lumbee Catacombs for Iron Bars to complete the Knight Sword quest, which will take you straight from 1 to 30 smithing, although you will need level at least 10 mining so that you can mine the Blurite. But with that in mind, just go ahead and wield your army axe and go into the mine right here as you can see that's in Birthorp for some copper and tin ore. Remember to keep all the lapis lazuli that you do end up collecting because that will come in handy for making a little bit of startup cash a little bit later. But after you've mined yourself a full inventory of copper and tin, just go ahead and exit the cave, use the furnace there, and make yourself some bronze bars. At this point you probably won't be able to make any bronze arrowheads, so just go ahead and bank the bars until you are level 5 smithing. Once you're level 5 smithing you can just go ahead and keep doing this method, and s except instead of banking you could just go ahead and turn the bars straight into arrowheads at the end anvils there. That will cut down on time, you won't be banking, and you'll be able to use those arrowheads for fletching a little bit later on. You can go ahead and train your mining and smithing here until level 15 if you'd like, otherwise like I said you can complete the knight's sword quest so that you can go straight from 1 to 30 smithing. But obviously you will want to train your mining as well, so definitely do that and remember to keep all those lapis lazuli like I said. Now three other skills that are quite easy for you guys to train right away is going to be fishing, cooking, and hunter. You can go ahead and fish off the middle of the shore in Birthorp and catch yourself some some shrimp to start off with and then go ahead and cook that on the campfire which is not too far from there, just a little bit north. Also if you want to make it quite efficient, you can go ahead and grab yourself a bird snare from the hunter trainer in the area and then go ahead and set that bird snare down while you're cooking or while you're fishing and then whenever you see your bird snare is set off, go ahead and reset it, get yourself the hunter experience if you caught yourself a bird or just reset it if you haven't and like I said this will make it a little bit more efficient for you guys. You should do this until you're around level 20 or 25 fishing. You could do this until 25 fishing if you want to go ahead and fly fish right away although you will get a little bit better experience if you wait until 25 but also if you wait till 25 you can train your hunter a little bit longer. Three other skills that you are able to train quite efficiently, actually it's going to be two because you're going to be training hunter again while you're doing this. It's going to be woodcutting, fletching, and hunter as well again. With your dwarven army axe equipped you can go ahead and cut the regular trees in the hunter area there where you were fishing so you can keep training hunter while you're training your woodcutting. Obviously every time you see the bird snare go off go ahead and check on that. Whenever you get a full inventory of those logs you can go ahead and just fletch them into arrow shafts. This will mean that you won't have to bank and you'll also be able to use those arrow shafts for fletching a little later on. Remember to keep all the wooden knots that you get because you're going to be combining those with the lapis lazuli to make that quick easy money like I said earlier. One of the things that you can do is go ahead and buy yourself a steel hatchet from Bob in Lumbridge at the hatchet shop and this will make your woodcutting a little bit faster experience. If you don't have the level requirement to use the steel hatchet, you don't have to worry because even if you put it on your tool belt, it will go ahead and rank itself up until it is at the full steel hatchet capability. Now you can go ahead and do this until 15 or 20 woodcutting, 15 woodcutting if you want to go straight to oak, or 20 woodcutting if you want to train hunter more. I would recommend going to 20 anyways because that way you'll be a little bit faster when you go to start cutting oaks, and you'll have a little bit more arrow shafts to go ahead and train some more fletching, which you will be combining with some feathers and those arrowheads that you created earlier. Also. Always keep an eye out for bird's nest because you never know when one could fall out of the tree and you're definitely going to want to use those later on because they have a chance at dropping some tree seeds which are going to come very in handy with farming later on if you don't feel like doing the vine super mini game which is 
something I'm going to get into a little bit more in a little bit. Now for fire making, I'm definitely going to recommend to you guys to keep cutting down regular trees because those are the only things you're going to be able to burn so far until you get to level 15 where you can burn oak logs. Construction is definitely going to be an expensive skill, but with the methods I'm going to teach you guys, it's going to be pretty easy for you guys to get started on it. First of all, for construction, you're going to need to set your home in Taverly using the real estate agent in Varrock. Then you'll need to cut down some more regular trees and turn them into planks using the sawmill north of the east of a rock bank. Using the money you made from crafting hard leather boots, which is what I'm going to tell you guys in a few seconds, this shouldn't be a problem at all. You can also buy iron or steel nails from the sawmill operator, or alternatively, you can make them yourself using the smithing skill to train two skills at once. At first, you will be wanting to make the first wooden chairs available to you, and continue making those until level 33, where you can start to begin making oak larders. Crafting is pretty easy to train right off the bat, so I'm going to tell you guys, go ahead and pick some flax and spin that into both strings, and all of this could be found in Taverly, so go ahead and pick the flax there, and then go a little bit north and you can find a spinning wheel, turn those into both strings for some crafting experience and you'll also get a little bit of farming experience from picking the flax. And then you can go ahead and bank near the birth warp lodestone. I'd recommend to train this way until level 27 crafting because that way you can make hard leather boots for a lot of easy money. Also remember to craft all those wooden knots and lapis lazuli into brooches and then sell them to any general store for quick startup cash. But one thing I'm going to tell you guys is do not use the bowstrings that you make on low level bows. You're going to want to save those for high level bows because that will increase your fletching experience quite significantly and you don't really want to waste them on low level bows. Like I said, for quick easy money, after you've used the magic guide that I'm going to go into a little bit later on in the video, you can kill cows in the Taverly cow pen. Then go a few steps north to tan them, and then you can also buy some thread here, and then you can turn them into hard leather boots, and then you can sell them right back to the same guy who tanned them to you. Although there won't be a whole stockpile of thread at this shop, so what I would recommend doing is going to Alcarid and going to the crafting store there, and buying a bunch of thread, because I think he holds either 100 or 1000, but either way, you're going to be set for quite a while once you get those threads. So using this method, you can obtain a full inventory of cowhide, tan them, craft them into hard leather boots, and then sell them all within the same area, making this quite an effective way to earn money. Runecrafting is a fairly easy skill, and I would recommend to get started on it because it's going to help you with your magic training, which I'm going to tell you guys in a little bit, and it's also quite quick to level up at the lower levels. So first of all, you're going to want to head east of the birth orb load to get the wicked hood, and then right click and use the teleport option. Enter the low level rune span and pick up the floating rocks you see around there. Then you can go ahead and siphon the air esslings until you have a decent amount of rune essence, around 100 or so, and then you can go ahead and siphon the highest nodes available to you for the fastest XP. I recommend to do this until 44 rune crafting so that you can craft 5 air runes per essence and you can also create nature runes. Nature talismans can be obtained through the rare drop table and lower level creatures which have access to the rare drop table. You can obtain an air talisman after the rune mysteries quest or alternatively you can kill goblins for a common drop. Fire talismans can be obtained as common drops from dark wizards while training ranged and water talismans can be obtained as uncommon drops from spell wisps or wizards while training ranged. Now farming is a skill you're going to want to train right away. To start off, you're going to want to buy an inventory or two of compost from the farmer in Taverly, then right click the leprechaun right near him and use the exchange option to store them inside. <laughs> that kind of came out wrong, but it kind of went in right, didn't it? You can do this with 10 or 20 plant cures as well if you'd like. I would definitely recommend this as you won't have to buy them later on in case you find that any of your plants are diseased. Remember to buy a watering can because it's going to help decrease the chance of your plants becoming diseased. Make sure to take the three free potato seeds from the farmer here and grow them in the patch next to you every time you come here. You can always come back here for more seeds and it is definitely recommended to do so whenever you can. Before and after farm runs are the best times to do so. And if you ever pass by it, make sure to buy some of the best seeds you can use. You should probably even stock up on the higher seeds as well, like sweet corn and strawberry, as they're a little bit harder to obtain and they will definitely come in handy later. Trust me, you're going to thank yourself for buying them now rather than later. Remember to use compost on the patch here as well every time you can. Even though this patch will never become diseased, you will gain XP from planting the compost, and at the lower levels, the more XP the better. You may grow bush patches if you'd like, but for now you could just stick to the allotment patches south of Falador near the Ivy, northeast of Arduin, northeast of the Canifis Lodestone, and north of the Catherby Bank. There are also flower plots and as well as herb plots here, so it makes a great place to train your farming. 
You can also play the Vine Sweeper minigame in order to buy more seeds, including tree seeds as well, so that you won't have to rely on just birds' nests from trees for your tree seeds. You can travel to the minigame by right clicking any tool leprechaun and choosing the option to teleport. You can return to the spot you just were by entering the portal inside the minigame. Now moving on to prayer, if you're still a low prayer level, you can do the Nexus. It should bring you around to 40 or so prayer within 2 hours or so. Otherwise you can buy an air staff in Varrock using money made from selling the lapis lazuli and kill chickens for a pretty OP prayer XP, I'm not gonna lie. I recommend to kill them in Lumbridge, getting a full inventory of feathers, raw chicken, and bones. Then you can teleport to Burthorpe and Bank, then teleport back to Lumbridge and repeat the process. Feathers are good for fletching and fishing. Raw chicken is going to be good for summoning later on that I'm going to teach you guys about. Bones are obviously good for prayer. So save the bones to use on a bonfire after the completion of the 2014 Halloween event, which is called Death's Door. You can click the link on screen or in the description right now to watch the event guide. I just put one out yesterday, so it's actually pretty cool. And like I said, you get this ability called the cremation ability where you can basically use bones on a bonfire. Now let's move on to magic. With the money gained from crafting lapis lazuli, you can go ahead and buy an air staff in the Varrock staff store. You won't really need armor at this point, but you can buy wizard robes from the Varrock clothes shop if you really want. You can keep killing chickens if you'd like, but goblins are a very good XP per hour until around level 20 to 30. When you do reach level 30, go ahead and buy yourself a battle staff from the staff store in Varrock, and then you can either buy or craft air runes. I would definitely recommend to craft the air runes in order to save money. At level 14 crafting, you can make full imp hide which will serve as some good robes for now and they will also look awesome which is a pretty good plus. Then you'll want to enter the Lumbridge Catacombs and kill skeletons from around level 40 to 50. You can kill ghouls and canifes. There's no need to complete the priest and peril quest anymore to enter it. You just need to kill one level 33 ghoul to enter. You will need to buy or craft fire runes to make the training here more most efficient though. When level 50 is reached it is recommended to complete the underground pass quest for Ibn Staff as this will significantly improve your XP per hour. Once the quest is complete you can either continue Continue to kill ghouls until 60, or Tazar creatures in order to stockpile Tockle and get a rare drop chance at Obsidian Weaponry in the Obsidian Cape. If you choose to kill Tazar creatures, only kill the cats, not the her. You'll see what I mean because I'm going to show you on screen. And use the best water spell that's available to you. Once you reach level 60, you can go ahead and complete the Mage Arena minigame to obtain yourself a free God Cape and God Staff, which I would recommend to complete immediately. Just teleport to the wilderness using the Lever in Edgeville, while wearing nothing of course, and then run to the Mage Bank. Withdraw a full inventory of food, as well as air runes, talk to Collodion to begin the minigame, and keep in mind that this is a dangerous minigame and you can be PK'd in the wild. If you're a hardcore Iron Man and aren't keen on risking your account, you can alternatively buy a level 60 magic staff from the Tazar weapon store using Tockle. The only downside to this is that you won't have a god cape which will increase your magic bonus. Once you have 66 magic, you can go ahead and enter the Mages Guild in Yanil and purchase yourself some mystic robes, or if you already somehow have 56 crafting, which I'll touch on on how to get in the next video, and 50 defense, you can go ahead and create yourself some batwing robes, which will be great armor for you quite a while. Although you may need to have completed the Dragon Slayer quest to wear the torso, I'm not 100% sure, but it will still be best to complete the quest as soon as possible anyways, as you'll want to wear rune chest plates as well for melee training. Anyways, this is going to conclude the first half of the video. Unfortunately, this turned out a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the information so far, and hope you guys stick around for the next half of the video, where I'm going to teach you guys how to train the other few skills that I have not mentioned yet. And then stay tuned for the video after that, where I'm going to teach you guys how to continue training your skills to even higher levels. Higher than you ever thought possible on an Iron Man. Anyways, if you liked the video so far, go ahead and leave a comment down below saying that you did, or that you did find it helpful, because it lets me know that I'm actually doing something something that is helping other people. You can also just leave a like on the video if you don't feel like leaving a comment. It only takes a second and lets me know that I'm actually helping you guys. So, until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Take care, everyone.